But I reckon that the sufferings of this time are not worthy to be compared to the glory to come that shall be revealed in us. My dear friends, I'm reminded of the words of Padre Pio, who, Saint Padre Pio, who said, always think of heaven. This is where our eyes shall be placed, always thinking of heaven, not worrying about this world, thinking about the glory that is gonna be ours in the next life if we are faithful. And today's readings remind us of how because of Jesus, because he is the Son of God, we have nothing to worry about. What a beautiful story we have in the gospel today. Jesus instructing the people, so many people, that he has to leave the, the land, as it were, get a little distance between him and the people, goes out into a boat, the boat of Peter's, and gives his talk. And when he's finished, he says, launch out into the deep. And maybe that should be a, a word for us to think about. Maybe that's what we have to do. Launch out into the deep. Do what we have to do. Do it valiantly. And Peter says, all night long, Lord, I have, we have toiled and taken nothing. But at thy word, I will do. And he did. And lo and behold, they had such a draft of fishes that they could not carry them all in one boat. They needed help. And there's so many fish that they were all astonished and the net broke. My dear friends, this is a, a beautiful allegory of what will happen in the church if we listen to Jesus launching out into the deep and doing what we should be doing, doing all that God wants. And we will have such a great catch of fish that we won't believe it. Maybe all the troubles in the world today and all the troubles in the church are is because we have not launched out into the deep. We have not lived as we should be living. We haven't practiced the Fatima message. That's for sure. Our Lady gave us the instructions. God's will, right? We have all kinds of grandiose plans in our church. All kinds of new evangelizations and new this and new that and new this and new that. My dear friends, it pales as almost nonsense compared to what Our Lady said, to do what the Blessed Virgin Mary says. Men must stop offending God. He's too much offended by sin. This is what we need to do. We need to live good lives. We need to obey the commandments, all of us, both in and outside the church. The scandals remind us that the church has not lived up to its, its nature, what it should be doing. And we need to pray for our leaders in the church that they too will convert and give up sin. We need to live for God's commandments and obey his commandments. Right now in America, I'm just thinking of a, a question that's raging with the various bishops. It shouldn't be any question, there's no doubt about it. You can't give Holy Communion to a, a noted abortionist who says it's a right for people and it's a right for the land or the, the state to have abortion. My dear friends, that's, that's, an, that's an easy one. But for some reason or other, they don't seem to get it right. And that's what's wrong. We don't get it right. We haven't listened to Our Lady. We haven't listened to the commandments. And that's what we need to do. We need to obey the commandments, not offend God. We need to pray the rosary, morning, noon, and night. This is what she said, pray the rosary, pray the rosary. St. Francis says it's the most powerful prayer we have, of course, outside the mass, but the rosary. And we need to shout it from the housetops, including also to do the five Saturdays, first Saturdays. Our Lady says, when, a men, when enough men do what I say, then the Holy Father will have the grace to consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart. So we haven't done what we've, we should be doing. We really haven't been told it by the hierarchy, by the bishops, by the parish priests, and so on. 
I ask people about in the five first Saturdays in confession, and they, sometimes they don't know what I'm talking about. How could that be? The five first Saturdays, that should be a must in every parish, shouting it again from the housetops. This is what we need to do. We need to do what God wants. And this is what Peter does. He does what God wants, Jesus wants. And look at the magnificent draft of fishes. So many fish that he couldn't carry them. In the, they couldn't carry them in the boats. My dear friends, this is what we can do with God. With God, we can do all things. And that's why we need to do what Our Lady says at Fatima. Today's Mass is a beautiful Mass, as all Masses are. So perfect. St. Not Saint, not Saint yet, but Father Gabriel of St. Magdalene in his book of Divine Mercy and Intimacy tells us two ideas dominate the liturgy in today's Mass. Great confidence in God and acute awareness of our own human misery and insufficiency. Great confidence in God. My dear friends, if God is on our side, what we need to, we have no need to be afraid of anything if God is on our side. So we have to have great confidence in God. God can do all things. There's nothing that he can't do. And if he asks us to do something that's very difficult, we just pray. The problem is people don't pray enough. They don't honor God enough. They don't glorify him. They don't thank him. They don't pray the rosary like they should, morning, noon, and night, as I've said before. And if we do that, the opposite of what St. Paul says in Romans 1.20 and following, and so they are without excuse, seeing they knew God, but they didn't glorify him. They didn't thank him. They didn't give him thanks, but became vain in their reasoning and their senseless mind was darkened. That's what's happening to the church today. That's what's happening in our world. That's what's happening on the high street. I look out on, this, on the high street on a Sunday morning, everybody's walking up and down. Have they obeyed the commandments to have Sunday obligation to keep holy the Sabbath? We're not keeping the commandments. We're not praising, we're not honoring, we're not glorifying God. And because of that, we become vain in our reasoning. If we did praise and honor and glorify God continually, right, continually, then we will not be vain, but we wise, right? And our minds, instead of being blinded, will be enlightened. And that's what we need to do. We need to do these things. We need great confidence in God and acute awareness of our own misery. Also in today's gradual, St. Father Gabriel reminds us the Mass begins with the, the Lord is my light, I should say the introit, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? We should say that continually, as the psalmist says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? This pandemic, we shouldn't be afraid of this pandemic. God is allowing it. He's permitting it, all right? And it's for our purification and good will come out of it. So we don't need to be afraid. Just do what we're supposed to do. Sadly, I'm afraid that for so many people not having to go to the mass obligation, maybe they find it a little easier now and that they're not coming back. So we need to pray for that. We need to pray that people need to give God more devotion and honor, as I just said. So the Lord is my light and my salvation. So we need to have great confidence in God, confidence in Jesus' re re redemption. The strength is, St. Paul tells us in today's epistle, the struggle is arduous and painful, yeah, right? St. Paul tells us, the sufferings of this time are not worthy to be compared to the glory to come that shall be revealed in us. This thought is one, is one of consolation, hope, and confidence. It does not, however, prevent us from longing for freedom and complete redemption. This is what the apostle experienced when he said, we also who have the first fruits of the spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption of the sons of God, the redemption of the body in Christ Jesus. Yes, we will suffer, we will groan, it will be hard, 
but we have nothing to fear because God is with us. And God has told us already that we, we, we need to have confidence in him. And he says, St. Paul remarks, should say, Father Gabriel reminds us, the more we suffer because of our wretchedness, the more we should run to Jesus with full confidence in the power of his redemption. So this is what we need to do, to pray more, to beg Jesus to help us. Don't be afraid of anything, right? Because God will help us. Our Lady will help us. We remember in the Memorare, remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection. So Our Lady will help us, and God will help us. Our Lady will intercede for our, us, and we'll have to we'll have overcome all evil. And we should remember what John tells us in 15.5, without me, you can do, do nothing. And we see that in today's gospel. Because today's gospel is a practical demonstration of the words of Jesus, without me, you can do nothing. Simon and his companions had been fishing all night and had caught nothing. But that is all they had been able to do by themselves. If we had the, some similar experience in the spiritual life, we will recognize that it, that is often our situation too. How many efforts we have made to rid ourselves of this or that attachment, to forget injuries, to adapt ourselves to our neighbor's way of doing things, to subject our will to another's. And yet, after all these attempts, we find our hands empty, like, like Peter's nets, let us not be discouraged if we can humbly acknowledge our failure itself will turn into victory. So it happened to Peter after he admitted publicly that he had taken nothing. Saint, huh? The kingdom of heaven. In a spiritual interpretation of today's gospel, Don Prosper Garanger in his book, The Liturgical Year, comments on the, of the, on the allegorical interpretation of the fathers who relate the gospel allegory story to the church. In other words, the church, we see from this story of the narrative of the apostles going out in their boat, catches the fish. As I've already alluded to this, already mentioning this about the church and how the church, Peter and so on, caught nothing by themselves, but with God, their nets were full. And that's what happens to us when we do what God wants our nets will be filled with the fish, fishes that we caught because God is helping us. Without God, we can do nothing. And that's what we need to do in the, in the church, to pray continually, as I said, with the rosary especially, right? because our, our Lady asks for us. As she now is, the church is the multitude without distinction between good and bad. But afterwards, that is after the resurrection, the good alone will compose the church in their number. And we see this in the scripture. The kingdom of heaven, says our Lord, is like to a net cast into the sea and gathering together all kinds of fishes, which when it was filled, they drew out. They chose out the good into vessels, but the bad they cast forth. And that's the allegory. That's what's going to happen at the end of the world. The church is a net catching all the fish, bringing all those into the church, as it were. But of course, they will not all be worthy. Some will be big sinners. They won't be repenting. They'll be sinning as Our Lady told us not to sin. And they'll have sins on their souls. And maybe they haven't prayed the rosary, which is a sure sign of you're gonna save your soul. So we see how at the end of the world, all these people who now are now in the net of the, of the church, as it were. And will they be saved? That's why Our Lady asked us to pray and sacrifice for many souls who pray and sacrifice. The last lesson that we can see here in this in these gospel and epistle today is the, story, the idea that we have to be patience, patient. And sometimes God will try our patience we will try and try to do things and we won't succeed, but we need to always continue. We need to have perseverance and always have confidence that God will help us, right? He's promised whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will give, give to you. 
where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of you. When, one or th when two or three agree upon anything, it will be given to them. And Our Lady has promised that, and if we ask in her name, we will receive things. So let us have great confidence in God and pray, especially now. You may think that your prayers are not doing any good, but of course they are doing good. We can't see all the good that's being done. But it is, every prayer is answered un, unreservedly, everyone. So all of our prayers, all of our rosaries will be answered. We will only see in eternity. I like the story of St. Francis. St. Francis was telling the story of the preachers in his, of his, in his order who were saving souls. Many times they give a good sermon and they, many souls would be saved, many souls would come, people would be very happy, go to confession and so on. And St. Francis says it makes some of the preach, preachers proud. They think it's them that are saving souls. But St. Francis said it's not them, it's the friars and the sisters and all the little people praying in the, in the pews and outside the, the, in the church praying and bringing down many graces. Those are the reasons, and sacrificing, because Our Lady said to also to pray and sacrifice, for many souls will go to hell because no one prays and sacrifices for them. So our prayers and our sacrifices will save souls, right? And the brother said, well, why doesn't God show people that their prayers and their sacrifices are doing so much good? And St. Francis says, no, they will become very pride, proud then. So God doesn't show us these things. He hides them from us. He wants us to have confidence in him and trust that these prayers will be answered, even though it looks like they're not being answered, but they are. We don't know where God is giving these graces to various people, all right, and still answering our prayers too, eventually, but he doesn't show us now because it will make, St. Francis says, it will make us proud. Well, when is he going to show it to us? In eternity. And then we will see the fruit of all our labors, all the good that we've done. I've also alluded many times to you about those people who instruct others unto justice shall shine like stars for all eternity. Well, that's what's going to happen to you. For all the prayers that you've said, all those works of your praying for justice in the world and justice in souls and goodness in souls, praying that souls will obey the commandments and so on. That's teaching others unto justice with your prayers and your instructions and so on. You will shine like a star for all eternity. And that's the glory that we're gonna have, the glory that we're gonna have in, the, in eternity. This is what we want to, need to think need to think about the glory that's going to be ours and think of heaven. That's our lot. That's where we're going. And of course, while we're on heaven, of course, we should just think that we don't want anybody to go to hell, especially those in our own family. So we need to admonish sinners and remind them of the Fatima message and remind them of the gospel messages that we all know, how we need to obey the commandments and live good lives. All right? And then we will be saved when our Lord takes the, the net of this, of this world with all the souls in it, we'll have good souls, many good souls, and we hope that there'll be very few souls that won't make it. So we pray and sacrifice, my dear friends, for souls, because Our Lady says many souls will go to hell because no one prays and sacrifices for them. So we've been destined for heaven, we've been predestined for heaven since God made us, to know him, to love him, and serve him in this world, and to be happy with him in the next. So let us work with all our strength and pray for souls, pray and sacrifice for souls so that many souls will be saved. May the Lord bless you.